Okay, right now preparing. By staying in this meeting, you can send to be live streamed. Anyone with access to your live stream can watch or share with others. Got it. It's loading. Mind shows we're live. We are live. Okay. All right, Paul, welcome to the Facebook Live. Everyone else who's joining us, thank you for being here. Um, just go ahead and do us a favor, introduce yourself, let us know who you are, where you're from, and remember to write your questions and comments down below. We'll happily address those either throughout or at the end when we uh, get to your comments. Um, today we're talking about a pretty important principle here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and let's dive into our presentation. Paul, you got anything to add before we get started? Buckle up. Buckle up, I like it. Okay, you can see my screen okay, Paul? Yes, I do. All right, let's pop into this. All right, so the title of our presentation today is the number one red flag your marketing agency is ripping you off. And that might sound a little uh, harsh, but the truth is that is exactly what's happening. So from my perspective here at Rook Digital, I'm the president and uh, co-founder here with Paul. Um, been doing uh, digital marketing since 2009, and Paul and I met several years after that. And he and I've been teamed up to do digital marketing ever since. Um, my perspective, having worked basically every job in this industry, is that most people are being ripped off and they don't even know it because they just don't have the capacity to know it. Would you agree with that, Paul? I would. It's so easy to get into this business and say you're a marketing agency when you've learned one or two tricks that may have worked a decade ago and then go out and sell that and keep reselling it over and over and never... Yeah, well, never updating your strategy, never adjusting with Google, but the next poor sucker that falls prey to your marketing plan and your pitch, they're going to get the same old stale strategy you used 10 years ago that just isn't working today. So yeah, absolutely. Quite a bit. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. We don't want to, we got a lot of content to go over and we don't want to take too much time. So let's get going. So let's start with the problem. And that problem is one size fits all doesn't fit all. So Paul and I have had several conversations about this over the years, but it's shocking to me how often we run into uh, digital marketing agencies that are actively providing a la carte or one size fits all products to their customers. Paul, why is that a problem? Well, the simple explanation is every business is different. You can't put the same bandaid on every business. You've got a problem. You need to diagnose what that problem is. If your car was broken down and you took it into the mechanic and every single time he said, oh, you need an oil change, that car is not going to run very long. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great way to put it. So we've taken this product problem. We've broken it down into four kind of sub problems or symptoms. So these are things to consider and conceptualize. Let's dive into that. Problem number one. You're tied to an agency that does the exact same work for every client without consideration of your individual needs. So anyone who's been involved in this industry for more than 10 years understands that Google treats every single website as if it is its own unique thing. Furthermore, every page. But Google wants to, wants, they, they look at you like basically your thumbprint or a fingerprint. It's unique. Your set of problems, your unique circumstances, the content on your page, all of it should be unique. And because of that, they want to identify what's wrong with your site so that your website has a chance to rank. And so if someone is offering the same services for every single, it's a prescriptive service to every single website that they work on, you're not differentiating yourself, number one. And number two, you're running into the problem that um, you're not necessarily addressing the problems you have that Google wants to see fixed. Exactly. Why do you think so many business owners fall into that problem? I think it comes down to lack of education. Simply, I think that business owners want to be business owners. They don't want to learn digital marketing. They want to outsource it. And they want to get back to doing what they do. You know, we talk a lot and internally here at Rook about this book, The e -Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And he says, really only three roles. There's three roles that have to exist in any business. There's the technician, the person who knows how to do the job. There's the entrepreneur who has the big vision to make it happen and the manager who gets things done. And most people can only be two of those at a time. And you have to kind of outsource the other pieces. So if, if I'm a business owner, I want to outsource as much as I can so I can focus on the thing that only I can do, the value that I bring. And digital marketing isn't necessarily one of those, even though it's necessary for most businesses. Exactly. So that's problem number one. Let's go ahead and look at problem number two. Your website suffers because Google algorithm changes from a decade ago 
are not being addressed. What's that mean, Paul? Well, we see this all the time when business owners come in and want to talk to us, say, hey, why am I not ranking? What's going on here? One of the first things we do is you want to look at your website and match it up to what Google is asking for. Google has their checklist of what makes a good uh, what makes a good website that they want to promote to people online looking for your services. And we see it quite often. They've been working with an agency or maybe they haven't worked with an agency for years. Google changes their algorithm 500 times, 500 updates a month on average. That's a lot to keep up with. And so we want to compare, are you up to date or not? Usually they're not. And so that's why you're suffering. Your website hasn't addressed the most recent problems. It hasn't updated to a mobile version. It hasn't fixed simple coding errors um, that have evolved over time. We see that happen all the time. Yeah, it's pretty shocking. I would say the other side of that is pretty shocking how often we see people executing digital marketing strategies and tips and tricks and techniques that are new cutting edge things that we learned about in 2009 and 10 and found out that Google didn't like in 2011 and 12. And yet they're still pitching those as as the hot, those things as the hot new trend. So that's always super troubling. And if your agency isn't paying attention and learning and, and playing within the bounds of Google set, you're basically setting yourself up for failure now. And that might be why you're not seeing results or number two, which might be worse is you're seeing some momentum because Google hasn't adjusted to that yet. And then when they do, because they eventually do catch on to that trend and adjust their algorithm, you're going to tank. And I think personally, getting used to a certain level of income and revenue in a business and then losing that can cause all kinds of heartache and problem, laying off people, losing um, contractors, uh, having to cut services or worse, cutting your own paycheck if you're a business owner, because that's income and revenue you lost that you were anticipating all because your agency wasn't doing a good job. Right. And those are all avoidable if you're paying attention to the algorithms and you're not trying to shortchange Google. You're not trying to cheat their system. That's right. All right, let's hop over to problem number three. And that is Google prejudicially suppresses your website because it considers it to be a dumpster fire. Now that <laughs> might seem a little harsh, but the truth is most websites we run across have major problems. And it's actually few and far between that don't have major problems. So if you've been trying to get your website to rank organically in Google, your local business, you're trying to rank in Google Maps, whatever it is you're trying to do and you're not seeing success, more than likely you're being suppressed because Google knows that your website does not deserve to be where it is. So if we consider what that means, um, you know, I think about when we were first coming up in SEO and Google, everyone talked about Google's blacklist and getting blacklisted by Google. And in order to be blacklisted at the time, maybe you had to have your website in what we call a bad neighborhood, poker, pills, pornography, something that Google didn't want to actively promote because of the nature of that content or what it was, um, highly spammy, highly you know malicious, that kind of stuff. Now, it's not even necessarily that they're going to blacklist you, but they're actively going to take measures to suppress you from ranking high because they don't trust your website's high quality. Right. Remember the people that are searching, when I jump on Google and I'm looking for something, I become Google's customer. Google wants to please me. They're not gonna show me something they consider a dumpster fire, a website that is subpar with poor information or duplicate content or just poorly built because that makes Google look bad. And if Google looks bad, who's going to come back and use Google for the next search? You're going to go somewhere else. That costs Google money. So, yeah, you have problems that are old on your website that have never been addressed that were done incorrectly from the start. Google's going to push you down in the results so nobody ever sees you and it can't hurt Google's reputation. That's right. I, I you know, we have a lot to thank Google for and then say what you will about Google. We have a lot to thank them for. And I remember, and most of you might remember using Lycos and Alta Vista and Yahoo back in the late nineties, early two thousands, but we don't use them anymore. They become obsolete because Google changed this. We learned with Google that we could do a search and expect to find a high quality website that solved our problem on that first page. And if not, you're probably just changing your search because maybe you made a mistake and didn't search for the right thing. 
being everybody else. They're, they're shamelessly ripping them off. And so we have Google to thank for that. So it's important. It's an important principle to remember, which we'll talk about as well in, a, in a, another slide coming up. Problem number four, your current and past agencies do the bare minimum to keep you on the payroll as long as possible, knowing you will inevitably leave. Now, this to me is something that most business owners don't consider. And if you're an insider in our industry, you definitely run across this. And that is, well, we can't guarantee results. And we know that this person's inevitably, inevitably going to leave. We have a churn rate of maybe six months or 12 months. And after that, we know our clients are just going to leave us and go hire another digital marketing agency. Maybe that sounds familiar to you if you're a business owner who's hired a marketing company, seen lackluster results, and then had to move on. There are a lot of people in our industry who kind of anticipate that. And so they're just doing the bare minimum to keep you on payroll so they can cash as much of a check from you as possible before you leave. Right. What, what are some of the tricks people should look out for? Uh, how, do, how does an agency string along a business owner getting bare minimum results? Yeah, great question. I think the, the number one thing that I've seen people do is they hide behind fancy reports. So we are big fans of third-party reporting. And that means it's data that we don't control. Anybody can manipulate data. If you look at any data, at all, you can make it tell whatever story you want to tell. And so having a third party give you your data and your reporting is an important step because there's no way of kind of mudding the water and telling a different story than what the data actually says. So fancy reports, they look good. Just remember if that report looks fancy, like you paid to have that report look fancy. That came, someone had to make that, that came from your pocket to do that. So that's number one. The same number two, which is also incredibly common, is people will guarantee results, which to me is like the biggest red flag of all, because I'm not Google. Like only Google can, can guarantee results. But if someone's guaranteeing results and say, you know, we'll have you page one for this search phrase within the next month, and they pull that off nine times out of 10, maybe even like 9.9999999 forever, infinity pi times pi, whatever, time out of times out of 10, that keyword phrase has no search volume, meaning nobody's looking for it. There's no competition because nobody's looking for it, but it sounds good. And so they can rank you in month one. And they're going to be like, look at us. We're awesome. We got you on page one, but it doesn't translate to traffic or leads or sales, whatever your goal is. Yeah. I remember when I first started in this business doing sales, you know, I was competing against another company and I talked to, no, I can't remember. Uh, a dentist or a auto repair shop, something like that. And he had just signed a month before I reached out to him. He's like, oh, these guys are already doing great. They've already gotten me all these first page results and I'm number one for a whole bunch of phrases. Look at this. And I remember thinking, man, how do we compete against that? Those guys must be good. And he sent me the report so I could look at it while we were talking. And I didn't know what to say. I thought, oh, well, I guess I'm not gonna get this guy's business. And then one of the older people that had been doing this for a while and was big into data, they said, yeah, well, let's look at those phrases. Are they worth ranking on? And we pulled them up. And I think he was number one for 15 different phrases in his market. And those 15 different phrases combined had less than 15 people a month searching for his service. When the phrase he really needed, one single phrase, had hundreds of people a month in his market that were looking for his service, but you know, he had been manipulated. He had been misled by that agency saying, look how wonderful we've done for you in month one, thinking that he had just won the prize. When the reality was, I'm sure months down the road, he realized I'm paying a lot and I'm number one, but what has this gotten me? Yeah. Yeah. Those are two big ones to look out for. There are plenty of others. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of time to go into all of those, but that, that framework is something to think about. Is that is my marketing agency providing just trying to keep me on the hook or keep me on the line here as long as they can? Are they stretching this out? Are they promising me different results soon down the road? Uh, I, I would say there's a big differentiator here between an agency when you before you even sign an agreement with them, they say we expect this to take 12 to 18 months. We expect this to take six months, right? That's an expectation. And if you're at month three and you're getting cold feet, that doesn't mean your agency is doing a bad bad job. 
they've warned you. They said, we expect this to take 12 to eight month, 18 months based on our understanding of markets, our understanding of how difficult, difficult it is to rank. And that's a key differentiator between, I'm not seeing results in three months, so I should probably bail, or I'm not seeing results in eight months if I know it's going to take 18 months, right? You just have to keep that in, in check there before you jump ship on a good agency. But if there's someone who's providing lackluster results and promising the moon and the stars, that's a red flag. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to talk about the possibility, which to us is expanded revenue. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But again, if you're just joining us, uh, go ahead and let us know where you're coming from. Where are you at in the United States? What's your business? Uh, and write it, whatever questions you have. Uh, well, hopefully, we'll dive into those at the end. And if not, um, we'll definitely reply to your comments uh, as we go through this. So why do you think expanded revenue, Paul, is the most important possibility to consider? Well, ultimately, the reason you invest in your business in the first place, you take the risk and spend the money to start your own business. Do you think you can make money? You think you can do it better than the next guy and make money? When you get down the road and you're doing marketing, why would you invest in marketing if you don't believe it can expand your revenue, can bring in more yeah. revenue to the company? Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. That's the whole reason to do it. And if you can't do that, there's not a lot of reason for spending that money in the first place. Well, let me ask this question. And I think you and I both know the answer to this. What is the second reason we have seen people invest in marketing that's not expanded revenue? <laughs> Uh, I actually just talked to a woman today. She's a dental, uh, a dental assistant. And I told her what I did. And she said, oh, I wish my doctor would do more marketing. And I said, oh, yeah, are you guys not uh, busy? Do you need to fill the hours? And she said, oh, no, we're, we're packed. We're full. We couldn't take on any more people. I thought, okay. In that case, why would you spend the money? So really, it comes down to two things. If you're at a position where you've got more business than you can handle, First thing you should do is raise your fees, start making more money on the work that you're doing. But if you need to expand and bring in more business, it's probably because either you want to open a new location or you've hired on some new associates, new people you need to keep busy. The second reason that we see most often, if you're not after making more money, then it's vanity. You yeah. just want to see your name everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, all across town. Oh, I'm the I'm the man to go to in town for this. You want to see your face on billboards and hear people talking about you. And if you want to pay for that, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say that the majority of people who are going to invest in marketing are looking for expanded revenue. And that's what a true digital marketing agency should be judged off of is return on investment. Are we providing more revenue than we, we cost? And if we're not doing that, then it's probably time to consider a different marketing strategy or a different marketing agency. So right. let's explore that a little bit deeper. So let's talk about the problems that we laid out um, earlier. And we'll talk about the possibility, what that becomes if you can work with a proper digital marketing agency or how to overcome that. So again, problem number one, you're tied to an agency that does the exact same work for every client without consideration of your individual needs. And the possibility here is you work with an agency that analyzes the progress of your website every month with third-party unbiased tools that tell the facts about your website's progress and make adjustments to their marketing efforts. Paul, what do you think? I think we have run into, we have had, I can't count how many clients we have had over the years that have come to us and it didn't matter the agency they went to, they were given the same marketing plan over yep. and over, uh, one size fits all and it doesn't fit all. Every market is different. Every industry is different. Even down to the same industry within sub-markets in major cities, Google looks at each one of them a little bit different. And nobody will have the exact same problems on their website. Yep. I mean, you know, there are different programmers that have different quirks in the way they build things. And so a one-size-fits-all being slapped on everybody 15 or 20 years ago, that may have worked. Um, and when Google was really young, you could get away with that because everybody knew there were three or four things you could do to manipulate Google search engine and get yourself to the top. So one size fits all worked, but Google has spent billions of dollars improving their search engine and figuring out how to, uh, how to prevent marketing agencies from manipulating yeah. those results with poor, 
poor websites, poor work. Yeah. No, I, I think that, um, again, it's about uh, keeping your agency honest. And, and, you know, I used to hate that. I used to hate when people say, you know, I just want to keep you guys honest. And that would always rub me wrong because I was like, you know, I consider myself to be a person with integrity and I consider myself to be an honest person. And I actively try to do, you know, be honest in all my dealings with my fellow man. You know, all of those key principles that I think make America and American business great is honesty and the ability to do a handshake deal. And unfortunately, because so many people have been ripped off, they have to try to keep their agency honest. So we take proactive steps here. Again, we use third-party tools. We do regular meetings with our clients, uh, at least uh, an hour uh, at the beginning of the month, if not four to five hours throughout the month, talking about progress and making changes and examining what's happening and adjusting to the needs of uh, our client's business. Because people pivot, people change, especially 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people had to pivot and to change the way they did things and what they focused on and being flexible by looking at a website as an individual rather than a prescriptive blanket process for everybody allows that flexibility to adjust for you, the client. So let's hop into problem number two again. Google prejudicially suppresses your website because it considers it to be a dumpster fire. The possibility. Google loves your website and actively pushes you higher in rankings because it knows you're playing by the rules and provide value to their customers, the searchers. And Paul, I know you talked about this just uh, earlier in our conversation today, but it's an important metric to understand that we are not Google's customer. Their searcher is the customer. And so we might get upset and say, well, Google changed their algorithm or Google changed this or Google's making it super difficult. Well, that's because they want the best of the best. They want the cream of the crop at the top. And SEO is something they want you to do properly to prove that you deserve to be there. And the better your site is, they're happy to put you there. Because as Eric Schmidt said in 2008, the internet is a cesspool of information. It is literally a dumpster fire in their mind. They consider it complete trash and they're trying to find the few good websites to put on page one and page two so that they can keep searchers on Google and using Google. Definitely. I mean, if you think about it, you go back to the problem. If you are Google's problem, if your website is a disaster, not only is that a problem for Google, now they've got to find a way to push you down and keep you where you won't be seen. But what kind of problem is that for your business? I mean, more and more, especially since COVID, everybody is now online looking for information. Yeah. With, uh, I can't remember what the latest stats are, but I mean, it's almost 80% of adult Americans have a smartphone yeah. and are accessing the internet constantly. There are over 6 billion searches every day for local goods and services for companies and looking for information, trying to solve a problem. If you are a disaster for Google, that's a lot of business you're missing out on. Everybody looks it up first. They may be outside your door to your office, your store, whatever you're running. And before they walk in, they're going to look up your company and they're going to say, okay, who is this? What are they good at? Is there a competitor nearby that I should be checking also? The opposite to this problem, though, is if you are a disaster, if your website is a dumpster fire, just imagine the flip side of that. What if Google loved your website? What if you matched up to their checklist and they looked at you and they looked at your competitors and said, man, we like your site the best. You are a great experience for anybody who comes on our search engine looking for your service. So we're going to join your team. We're going to play for you. We're going to send you as much business as we can. You go from barely paying the bills, barely making payroll, you know, maybe a little bit of profit at the end of the month to without even trying, your business is growing like crazy and profits are higher than you've ever seen before. That's the power of giving Google what they want. Give Google what they want to see on your website and Google will actively work on your team to push your sales. Yeah, we talk about this all the time. This is uh, the game that I used to play all the time when I was a kid growing up in Utah. The snow plows would come in and they push all the snow up in these big snow banks. And we would get on there and we'd play king of the hill. And I was king of the hill just because I was a thick boy. Um, but becoming king of the hill is hard. You're climbing, you're pulling people down, 
you're you're being pulled down. But when you're king of the hill, you just stomp on people's fingers. Like it's not hard to stay king of the hill. And that's how Google says it. They're looking for those kings of the hill to keep there. And then you have to do a momentous amount of work to shift that because that person has already proven they're trustworthy. And if you can do that for Google, they're going to give you that same credit. They're basically going to fortify you and put you in that position and keep you there. It's going to be very hard to move you because they trust you that much. So that's an important differentiator there. I like those thoughts, Paul. Let's hop over to problem number three again. Your website suffers because Google algorithm changes from a decade ago are not being addressed. And the possibility is your website is treated holistically, focusing on what Google cares most about in order to ensure you are unrestricted in your ability to rank high in Google searches. So Paul and I have talked a lot about this. Um, we talk about Google Panda and Google Penguin, the and possum, pigeon, hummingbird, think brand, the 500 plus algorithm updates they make all the time. These major shifts that were happening in 2011 and 12 that basically broke the internet and people were crying, SEO's dead, SEO's dead. Well, it's not dead. They actually have just made it more difficult for bad people to manipulate the system like we've talked about. And if you're not thinking about it holistically, if you're not looking at every page of your website and the quality of every page of your website, you're not going to rank and you're not going to rank long term if you rank in the short term. So having that holistic approach is key. It, it, I think we talked about it. Uh, I talked about it earlier, Paul. It's like having cancer inside your body. Go run some marathons. That's awesome. But eventually that cancer is going to catch up with you. So running a marathon today does not mean you are the epitome of health. You have to get the cancer. You have to cut it out and you have to treat that problem in order to be able to run a marathon for the rest of your extended life. Exactly. I mean, we see it nonstop. Every time we look at a website, we say, all right, the algorithm changes have brought us to here. What is the latest list of things Google wants to see on your site? Yeah. And compare. Okay, are these pro problems here being addressed? What we see from a lot of agencies is they have one or two tools that work really well. And so when you go to them, that's what they do. They just hammer away at that problem with the one thing they know how to do. And they can get some results. Mm -hmm. I mean, they often do. They'll get limited results, usually for a limited amount of time. Right. But ultimately, they've never addressed the core issue. You know, you want to run a marathon and you have cancer. Well, you need to run daily and you need to get your heart strength up. That's great. But the core issue to the health is that cancer. Eventually, that cancer is going to get you if you don't solve it. It doesn't matter how many marathons you run. Same thing here with Google. You may have a company, uh, I mean... The favorite thing companies want to sell you is link building. Oh, you've got to do link building and we're going to do link building. And that is 99% of the work they do for you. Well, eventually Google reviews your site and says, hey, you've got a lot of links, but those links are kind of worthless because your site is terrible and we don't want to send anybody to see your site. You know? So again, are they keeping up on those algorithm changes? I mean, 500 plus changes a month, every single month, over a, lot a decade. Of work. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot to take care of. And if your agency isn't actively addressing those and keeping you up to date, it's been a few years since that's happened. You've got a lot of work to do just to catch up to the status quo. That's right. Let's hop over to problem number four again, which is your current and past agencies do the bare minimum to keep you on the payroll as long as possible, knowing you will inevitably leave. And the possibility your new agency actively works to ensure your goals are met so that you are excited about working with them long-term as a partner, not a vendor. I think this is one of the key differentiators from Rook from most agencies is that we approach most opportunities to work with a company as a partner. We don't want to be considered a vendor. We want to be someone who comes in, analyzes the website, makes recommendations, empowers their team to make adjustments so that we can focus on the things that are most important. And the companies that have partnered with us and follow this model have seen tremendous results. I remember talking and sit when I was in sales, uh, selling digital marketing services, you know, forever ago. And people were like, I want to see hockey stick growth. I want to see my chart just going up and to the right. That's what I want to see. And when we partner with someone and we're able to work cohesively with their internal department, the people that they already have and leverage those skill sets and attributes that their companies are already paying for, we see, we tend to see that hockey stick growth pretty quickly because it's just a, almost a symbiotic relationship at that point. 
Right. And we like to, I mean, the thing is, the longer you work with an agency that's good, the better the results are going to be. Yeah. I mean, people get stuck in this vicious circle where they find an agency, they work with them for six months or a year, and there's a little bit of progress made, but it's not as fast as they would like. That They never really set good expectations. Uh, maybe the agency just didn't perform that well. And so they jump ship, they go to another agency, and then they end up going through that same process again. They're retracing the same part of the trail, and then six or 12 months later, they're jumping ship again. So they're back at the starting line. Yeah. With our clients, we're not running into that. I, I think if we look at the average time our clients have been with us, most of them have been with us for years. Yeah. So doing the bare minimum just leads to that revolving door. Doing what, well, we talk about this and we explain it to people all the time. When we're working on your site, we're going to sit back and look at it and say, all right, if this was my site, yeah. what's the best thing I can do for it this month? And that's what we attack. Yes, there's a strategy behind it. it we're, not, we're not looking at a month-to-month -month strategy. We're saying, what is the most powerful, effective thing I can do this month or over the next two to three months to reach certain goals? We want to keep our clients with us as long as possible because the results we get in month four, five, and six, they're pretty good. The, month, or the results we can get in year three, four, five, 10 times better, so much better because we've had a chance to get further down that trail instead of retracing steps over and over. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. And I, and I was thinking, uh, you know, we have a tree trimming company that we've partnered with since 2016, 2015. And, you know, he was doing somewhere around $4,500 a month in sales. And within six months, we were able to give him like 4,500 a day in sales. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, because he listened to us and he implemented the strategies over the course of 18 months, we literally got to the point where we told him, you don't need to invest any more money right now. Just sit back, rest on your laurels until you start slipping a little because you dominate every major keyword phrase in your industry, in your market, and you can't take on more business. And uh, he did. He went a year and a half without paying us another dime before he started to see competitors start crawling up and getting close to him. And then he hired us back to do more work. So that's a common, common experience with us. And, and I think that if you have that type of partnership with your agency, that's, that's what you want because it's, it's looking at your long-term goals and looking at your specific business rather than looking at how can I get another month out of this person? Right. Right. Okay. So we're going to talk about the path next, which we refer to as demystifying digital marketing. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let us know who you are. Uh, what company you're with, what you're struggling with, um, any questions that have come up, anything that you're, that's helpful. Uh, we love to hear that feedback and we love to uh, address those questions when we have a moment here. Uh, demystifying digital marketing. Why do you think that's the path towards reaching that possibility? Well, we realized years ago when we started working together, the reason the digital marketing industry or search engine optimization has gotten kind of a bad rap well, two major reasons. Number one is there are a bunch of guys pushing marketing and they really don't understand the basics. They just don't do good work. Number two is as consumers, whether you're a business owner or not, you're a consumer and you're used to going in and you pay money and you walk away with something that you can hold in your hands. You've, you've got a, a golf club, you had a meal, you bought a basketball or ticks to something, whatever it is, there's something tangible, physical. You can say, this is where my money went. With Digital marketing, it's all online. Yeah. You know, it's the deep blue digital ocean that your money is going into. And it's not always abundantly clear right off the bat what that money did for you. And so, our two main points of emphasis for us number one is really good communication with our clients, make sure they know what's going on and that they're involved in collaborating with us. And number two is education, teaching our clients what we're doing, teaching our clients so that they understand the basic structure of how a search engine works, whether it's Google or Bing or Yahoo or any other search engine on the planet, they all work off the same fundamentals. Now, you're a business owner, you got into business doing what you do because you like it, you're good at it. That's what you want to be an expert at. We don't need you to be an expert at our job. That's why you hired us. But if we can educate you to the point that you at least understand how the puzzle pieces fit together, all of a sudden, this 
you know, the shroud over digital marketing starts to disappear and you understand, oh, that's how that works. Well, then it all makes sense. No wonder why this past company didn't get me results. And that other company, we kept having this problem. No wonder we just brought on a client recently in Southern California and he told me, can you get me ranking on these? Look at these services I provide. I've got them listed on my website right here, yet nobody can get me ranking. And he's been through four different agencies in the last few years. And I looked at it while we were on the phone. I said, okay, well, here's the problem. Those services where they're listed, that's actually, it's an image, it's a picture. Mm -hmm. you're, you're showing a picture to Google, which Google can't read that picture. There's no data for them other than it's a picture. So no wonder you're not ranking for those. If you want them, you need to build it into your site and create these pages. And I explained it to him and he sat back and just stared at the screen for a minute and said, oh my gosh, you know how many people I've asked about that and nobody could explain why I couldn't rank for those. You know, we educate our clients. You don't have to learn everything we know, but teaching the basics of this is how a search engine operates and works, then all of a sudden, okay, now, whether you continue to work with us or eventually you go work with another agency somewhere else, you now have enough education that when you're talking to them, you can say, okay, that makes sense. Yes, that follows what I know about search engines or this guy has no idea. Either way, you're protecting yourself and your investment. Yeah, I don't think it was a week later that we didn't do an audit for a, a big e-commerce, national e-commerce company. And he was literally like, you're the only person talking about this stuff. And I remember when I first started this back in 2008 or nine, the girl that I hired was talking to me about these same things. And literally no one else talks to me about this. And it's because, you know, there is an infrastructure that exists here. And if we understand the infrastructure, all of a sudden it provides uh, double value. Number one, there's greater trust with us as a digital marketing agency. Number two, you're a better customer for us, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to question so much because there's that understanding when we're, we're educating you enough to, to really look behind the curtain and see what's happening, why we're doing what we're doing and why that matters. Right. Awesome. So let's revisit possibility. You got something else you want to add, Paul? Nope. Okay. Let's dive into possibility number one again and then talk about the path. Possibility number one, you work with an agency that analyzes the progress of your website every month with third-party unbiased tools that tell the facts about your website's progress and make adjustments to their marketing efforts. In the path, you un... So, did you freeze or did I freeze? I give us a minute. Looks like we have some issues with Facebook streaming us live. So give us just a minute. We'll get Phil to hop back in here and we'll continue with uh, our Facebook Live is sharing information today. Hey, Paul, you got All me? All right, we're back on. Yep. Hey, sorry about that, guys. We had a uh, internet went down for a second here at my house, uh, so I apologize. Let me just make sure we've got my audio settings set up properly. That all looks good. Right. Where, where did I cut out? I apologize, everybody. Uh, that last slide, right as you started talking. All right, this one right here. Okay. So possibility number one, you work with an agency that analyzes your progress uh, analyzes your progress, the progress of your website every month with third-party unbiased tools, 
oh, let me go back. Um, that tell the facts about your website's progress and make adjustments to their marketing efforts. In the path, you understand the fundamentals of SEO and how to distinguish between the snake oil salesman and the true practitioners of SEO. So I think this goes back to what we talked about just barely before I cut out, which is if you understand what matters and what doesn't, it's going to be a much better experience for everybody. And if you're an educated client, you're a better client. So we put a lot of emphasis on educating and training. And if you're looking for education and training, we have tons of video content on our Facebook page that dives into the fundamentals. We have full hour webinars that we did with Coast News out in Orange County, teaching people the fundamentals of Google My Business, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, um, basically all of the stuff that really matters to get started in this process. Right. So, and we've mentioned before, earlier today when we were talking, uh, you mentioned part of the problem is third-party reports and unbiased tools. Surprisingly enough, I talk to business owners all the time that there's a couple of things that are happening. Either number one, they're not getting reports at all, just zero reporting. Mm -hmm. They're paying thousands of dollars a month, and there's no report coming back to them about, hey, here's what we did. Here's the progress we made or didn't made. Here's the adjustments. They don't get any of that. Or if it is available, they're being charged for it. So they're actually being charged to have a meeting with their marketing agency every month, extra money, so the agency can say, well, here's what we did and let me explain the results to you. I mean, yeah. that's crazy. And then one of the biggest problems they run into is that that agency uses an internal report that they've created. They've got their own really pretty fancy PDF with cool colors and graphics and stuff. And they've gone through and they cherry pick the information they want you to see and dump it into that fancy report and then put it in front of the business owner. So the whole time the owner is thinking, okay, well, we're doing all right. We're making progress. But six months into it, he's thinking, well, SEO must not work because I'm making progress every month, yet I'm not making any more money. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting process. And I mean, it's pretty shocking when you find out people are billing people to have reporting calls. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem right to me. So let's hop over to possibility number two. Google loves your website and actively pushes you higher in the rankings because it knows you're playing by the rules and provide value to their customers the searchers. In the path, you've gone through a website audit and have a better understanding of what changes need to happen on your website today in order to see long-term success. So Paul, why do you think an audit is so important? Well, not everybody does it the same, but in our agency, if you've ever talked to us, the very first thing we do, even before we talk about, hey, you know, this is what it's going to cost, is we perform an audit. We look at the audit because we need to know the basics. What problems do you have? What structural deficiencies does your website have? What pieces of Google's checklist are you missing? If we know that, then we can take care of the foundational principles. Once that is done, all the additional work we do on top of it to make sure Google does love your website and Google actively pushes you in front of all of those new customers every month, well, then that's 10 times more effective. Yeah, absolutely. No, I was just thinking too, when you're talking about structural deficiencies, I think one of the big problems we run across is someone has paid a lot of money to have a very pretty looking website built that will do nothing for them. And that's mm -hmm. a very common problem. And so the audit exposes a lot of that, whether that uh, developer or designer was using, um, you know, a HTML elements like an H1 tag as part of a design element instead of using CSS, things that you as a business owner don't care to know, let alone would know, um, those are common problems we find. And so an audit basically allows us to perform a physical, if you will, and evaluate what's going on here, like what is actually happening behind the scenes. And we can identify those problems and, and uh, make recommendations on how to improve those. So. Right. All right. Possibility number three, your website is treated holistically, focusing on what Google cares most about in order to ensure you are unrestricted in your ability to rank high in Google searches. In the path, you've set up tracking and reporting to see how Google is responding to your updates and SEO initiatives. I personally think of two tools that every business owner should have. Number one, 
Google Analytics. Number two, Google Search Console. If you don't know, Google Analytics is a free tool at analytics.google.com. It's a piece of code. You put it in your website and then it will track people, how they interact with your website, how many people are coming, where they're coming from, what country, what city in the state. You literally see down to the city. You can track what device they were on. You can get demographic information, average age, are they men, are they women? All of these key distinguishers and pieces of information that let you know valuable data about your website. And number two, is my marketing actually working? Working. We talk about these people who rank you on uh, keyword phrases that are kind of garbage. They don't do anything for you. They're just, or vanity phrases, which is a common thing that we run across. I want to rank for X, Y, and Z because I believe that's where most traffic is. Well, if, though, if you rank and you don't get traffic, it doesn't matter. And you track that with Google Analytics. Now, the value of Google Analytics is it's third party and it's straight from the source, the font of all knowledge, if you will, in Google, in digital marketing. Number two is Google Search Console because it's another free tool and you just Google the phrase Search Console and it'll pull up. You sign up, it used to be called Webmaster Tools if you've been around for a while. And it's Google telling you, hey, here are the problems we see with your website. You should fix these problems. And when there is a problem, they send you an email and they say, hey, we ran into this problem on your website. You should probably fix this. Well, I'm not a rocket scientist, but if I was, I'd probably pay attention to Google telling me there's a problem. That's like your teacher saying, this is important. It will be on the test, <laughs> right? Right. And we run into that again. There are a hundred different tools you can use to track the information on your website. And we hear other agencies, friends of ours even, to say, oh no, Google Analytics, that's terrible. You don't want to use it. It's not always accurate and such. We use this instead. And then that agency will turn around and say, oh, well, we're not going to use Google Analytics. Uh, you're going to pay an extra few hundred dollars a month for this system yeah. to give us analytics, but it's good information. And so you're paying more, but the reality is 99.9% .9 of those other softwares used uh, to provide analytics about your website are all using an API pulling their data directly from Google. Right. So, you know, it, it's all Google data, save your money and put it where it's more useful. But then also you're getting it again, Google's a third party. If we show you the data directly from Google, we can't manipulate that. I can't go in and change Google's system to show numbers I like, yeah. which means going back to what you said, you hate it when people say, well, I'm just trying to keep you honest. Well, you know what? Those third party reporting tools that we use, they keep us honest. That's not me cherry picking information to show you. That is me saying, hey, here's the work we did and this is how well Google liked it or didn't like it. And then we can make good decisions for the next few months. Best of all, they're free. They're absolutely free. You can go to YouTube, you can Google how to install Google Analytics. There'll be plenty of people who teach you how to do it. You can go to our Facebook page. You can find the one hour training on Google Analytics and Search Console each. And you can spend that time going through and learning how to use them and read those reports. So you can, again, keep us honest if you have to. All right, and possibility number four, your new agency actively works to ensure your goals are met so that you are excited about working with them long-term as a partner, not a vendor in the path. You hire an agency that relies on third-party reporting tools, meets with you regularly, and adjusts your marketing plan on a monthly basis to ensure you're working towards your goals and initiatives. Right. So that goes back to the longevity of the clients we work with. Uh, again, and you've heard us say this a bunch of times, most of our clients have been with us for years because we want to see their goals met. But in order for us to do that, we also need collaboration with you. Before we decide if you're a good fit to work with our agency, we talk to you about time. Can you give us you know, a few hours a month, between three and five hours a month to actively work with us so that we can collaborate on your goals? You're gonna know things about your business we never will. Yeah. You'll know things about your industry that to you are common sense, but we don't work in that industry, so it doesn't occur to us. And you're gonna know terms or slang or even things geographically around you neighborhoods are called this or that all things that if you're collaborating with us if you're working with us during the month it allows us to open new doors for you to find more avenues than you knew were possible to bring in new business so we use those third-party tools and meet with you regularly to give you as much data as we can and then we work together to say okay 
how do we make your results next month even better yeah. and make those adjustments continually month after month? It's not a one size fits all. Yeah, I mean, as we're recording this, the Delta variant of the COVID-19 vaccine or COVID-19 um, pandemic is hitting most cities pretty hard. Cities are locking down. I'm in Los Angeles. We're basically uh, on the verge of another lockdown here because it's so bad. And so you never know what's going to happen. What if the housing market crashes? What if there's another recession? There are all of these factors that are going to adjust your business. And so again, if you're locked into a piecemeal, this is cookie cutter approach to digital marketing, you're not going to have the flexibility you need to adjust when you need to. Um, those are key things. And, and I look at you know what we do. We provide monthly reporting uh, where you spend about an hour with your clients. Uh, with our every single one of our clients gets about an hour with their account manager where we break down, you know, a tool like SEM Rush that shows keyword progression. We use Google Analytics. We use Google Data Studios to gather information. We look at Google Search Console, among other things. We look at Google My Business Insights. Then we also have a mid-month report. It's a video report that goes out that talks about progress and what initiatives you discuss in that one-hour call. And then we even have a weekly rank tracking software that sends a report to you every week, then you can log into it literally 24 seven and see where you're ranking for the keywords that you're targeting. And that's just, those are just three pieces of, of reporting that we put together to provide and solve this problem for our customers, right? So you can get clear, crystal clear data and be flexible and adjust. And that's why people like to partner with us, not just to look at us as a vendor. Yeah, and going back to your mention about COVID, and being able to adjust your marketing plan. Again, being flexible helps. How many businesses, Phil, uh, let's use the food industry, for example, when COVID hit, how many people could you jump online and see if they were open or not? And if they had cur curbside pickup? At the, at the beginning, nobody. Yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, nobody. Google reacted to that mm -hmm. and said, hey, you know what, curbside pickup, that could really help these businesses that are doing it. Maybe you can't dine in, but if curbside pickup is open, that's one more tool the businesses could use. Anybody we were working with, we were aware of that and we were making those adjustments. And even now I've seen here local to me, a bunch of businesses that I know they're doing curbside pickup. They never made that adjustment during the pandemic. Think of how much business they lost because their marketing agencies had no idea what updates were being made yeah. or maybe they knew and they just didn't make any adjustments to that marketing plan. Yeah. Well, let's even take e-commerce. Let's say you're on a platform like Shopify, which is one of the bigger e-commerce platforms right now. And they enabled a COVID-19 uh, basically a policy so that you could publish how you're handling the pandemic, what you're doing. And at the beginning, when we all thought that this was being transmitted through touch or through the air, people were pretty freaked out. How long is this going to take? What, how, do you, how are you keeping me and my family safe? Why should I even buy from you if you're potentially going to send this contagious disease to my home? I'm going to open a box with it in my family. Almost like the, you know, the anthrax attacks back in like 2004, like 2001, two, I guess. Like all, all of that, that fear that existed was solved by putting a policy in place. But if your agency wasn't actively involved or doing these things, you probably never even built that policy. So people had no idea. So that's the reason why that's so important. And that path will eliminate that problem. Anything else you want to add on this stuff, Paul? No, that's good. Okay. We've been going on for a while now, almost an hour. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about this last piece, which is, you know, our invitation to you. And what I want you to do is I want you to go to rookdigital.co slash audit right now. And just request an audit. It's 100% free. We want to do this for you. And what it allows you to do is allows us to, spend 15 minutes getting to know you and your business, getting a bunch of data. Then we go out and we spend a pretty significant amount of time looking at where you're ranking, what keywords you're ranking on, what keyword opportunities exist. We'll look at your competition and see what they're ranking on and things you should be ranking on. Then we crawl every single page of your website, just like uh, Google would do. And we look at that and we go through and we say, we know these are the best practices for SEO to be up to snuff, to be you know par, on par with what Google's expectations of a minimally good website is. And then we go in and we just start highlighting all the problems we can find. I mean, we did an audit recently. It was over 30,000 pages of content. And we went through and we marked every single one of those and how, like a highlighter, what all the problems were. And we spent an hour with that company breaking that down. 
and showing them problems they didn't even know existed that they couldn't have known existed because they don't have that understanding and they're focused on doing what they do best, selling a product. And so, you know, one of the things I grabbed was a review right from our Facebook page, Jace Grimm's out in the Coachella Valley. He's a, re he's a restaurant consultant. And he said in a quick 30 minute phone call, Rook helped me optimize my website to show up first in my area for restaurant consulting. And I've already gotten new leads because of it. Highly recommend working with them. That's one of many, many people who've done these audits and have raved about it. And you get actionable information. So number one, you'll know exactly what you need to do to fix problems on your website right now. You can go do those if you're technically capable. We just did a, another audit for uh, an attorney here in Southern California. And he got back to me and said, I spent 15 hours solving the problems that you showed me in his audit. He's unique. He's been online since 1995. He already ranks nationally for major, major keyword phrases with tens and tens of thousands of searches per month, but even he had problems he didn't know. So he's going to work with us. We're going to fix some of the things he doesn't have time to do. He's not a monthly client, but even still, we enabled him to fix major problems he didn't know. And whether you're that type of customer or the type of customer who's looking for a digital agency or, you know, Paul, as you talk about keeping your agency honest, uh, this is a great way to do that. Right, Paul? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the same thing. If you went into a doctor and said, you need surgery, you'd probably say, okay, I need a second opinion just to double check. Mm -hmm. Same thing with marketing. We talk to people all the time where we are that second opinion. They're not getting their reports or they're getting their report and they're not sure what it means. They're not really sure if they're getting progress. They say, hey, can you take a look? Let us do that. Let us be that second set of eyes. Come to us. Let us do an audit. I mean, to break down an audit in plain terms, we're taking Google's checklist of what makes their favorite kind of website and we're comparing your website to it. We're saying, okay, you checked off these items and you did a good job. You didn't check off these items, they're holding you back and you did these ones wrong. So let's fix them. We can do it for you or we even explain right in that call how to fix a bunch of this stuff. So just like Phil said, if you're the kind of business owner that you wanna control your website and you're not afraid to jump in and make those fixes and you know how to, Good. We're going to explain it to you and you're going to walk away with an hour's worth of very valuable consultation and you're going to be able to go in and make a lot of things happen. Or maybe you're not going to do it yourself, but you're going to go back next time you meet with your marketing company, you can say, hey, well, what about these things? I've got these problems with my site. Why haven't you addressed it? Or these things are wrong. Why are we going this direction? You'll have a better idea of the strategy you should be pushing for yourself to protect your business. So we're happy to do that. And a website audit is a great first step to find out how do I web, how well do I match up to Google? How well do they like me? Do they want to be on my team? Yeah, you know, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about two specific examples of this. So there's a dental, um, a, a pretty major dental uh, company or dental office out in uh, the out on the East Coast, and they came to us to do an audit. And we uncovered two big problems. Number one, fundamental things that needed to happen weren't being done. And number two, they were overpaying by about $3,000 a month. I mean, a hefty bill, like the type of bill you would expect from like a major e-commerce brand. And so we were able to not only point out some major issues they needed to get corrected, we were able to save them immediately three grand when we brought them on as clients. And most recently, literally like a week and a half ago, we recently brought on another client and it was the same deal. We were able to point out fundamental things that that agency said they were doing every month that they were not doing and immediately identified that at the top range of their budget, they were still overpaying by over a thousand dollars every single month. So immediate savings for those people. And we we're able to get them out of a bad situation with an agency that wasn't doing a good job for their client. So right. take advantage of that free audit. Let us help. Let us share information. Let us just be that second opinion. Yeah. And, and lastly, like, you know, the audit's free. Obviously, we want you to do that. And if you're just looking here, you're just getting information, hey, maybe the least thing, the only thing we would ask for you is go to facebook.com slash work digital marketing and leave us a review. I mean, click on our page. Just leave us a review. Let us know if this was helpful to you. That always helps us. It helps other people know that we're out spreading really important information about digital marketing and SEO and trying to save businesses pain and 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 budget that they're just lighting on fire. So, uh, Paul, you got anything else you want to add before we end this up? Nope, that's it. Thanks for joining us today. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll look forward to catching on our next live or uh, another video.